Soul Twin Audios, stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. Modern day era driving you up a wall? Time travel not likely in your future? Then follow me for a healthy offering of yesteryear with old time radio theater. Your remedy for unwanted 21st century pain. The following program was produced and directed by Rachel Pulliam, originally for Dream Realm Enterprises under the title Showcase Classics. Dream Realm Enterprises brings you a double feature from Showcase Classics. Tonight, we pay tribute to that old-time radio program, Suspense, starring Rhiannon McAfee, Christy Glick, Pete Lutz, in Dark Journey, and That Thing in the Window. Mary, turn that vacuum off here for a minute and come over here, will you? I want to show you something. Yes, sir. Right here, out this window. Now look across the street, directly across, the opposite apartment. See that window about three windows in from the left with the kind of blue draperies? Uh Uh-huh. There's someone sitting there in a chair. He hasn't moved all night. I think he must be dead. Dead? Lord mercy, Mr. Ames. Take a look at him and tell me what you think. Okay. But I don't favor looking at a corpse, Mr. Ames. It's unlucky. Now, which window did you see? Third one over? I wish I had my glasses with me. There, right there where my finger's pointing. I'm afraid I don't see it yet, Mr. Ames. Oh, look. The window with the blue draperies. He's wearing a sort of gray suit. The arm. You see the arm hanging over the side of the chair? No, sir. But you've got good eyes, Mr. Ames. If you see it, I'm not arguing with you. Now, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I only began to notice it last night, I guess. I guess I first have to be sure the man is really dead. That's right, Mr. Ames. You don't want to be getting yourself into any trouble. Maybe he's only sleeping. Or maybe he's incapacitated. Maybe the poor soul is just an invalid. Eh? Yes? Oh, hello. I'm Martin Ames. Are you the superintendent of this apartment house? That's what it says on the door. I've come to inquire about one of your tenants. Yeah? What is it? What do you want to know? I live across the street. Well, I'll be frank with you, sir. I've been looking out my window across to this building now for two and a half days, and there seems to be someone dead in one of the windows. Huh. Which window? It's the tenth floor. I've counted from the street, and it's ten stories up. There's a window with blue draperies about three windows in from the left. Facing toward me, that is. And there's a man sitting there, slumped down in a chair. Huh. Just a minute. I'll get out my chart. Tenth floor up from the street, huh? Well, it's really the ninth floor. The lobby counts one. We got two apartments along the front of the house. It's in the front, yeah? That's right. Huh. Now, three windows in from the left. Uh, That'll be 9B. A four room. Uh, Nah, that couldn't be right. 9B is two ladies. You say this is a man? Yes. The face isn't clearly visible. The head slumped forward. He's wearing a gray suit, and he's sitting in a high wing-back chair. Uh, I don't place him. Well, maybe he doesn't belong in the house. Maybe he was visiting someone. Like I said, this is all conjecture, of course. He may not be dead, but I've watched him a good deal. I'm home a lot in the daytime. My profession, the stage, doesn't take up too much of my time. It looks quite suspicious. Okay, I'll check on it. Mind if I stick around? No, sit down. I'll I'll give 9B a ring first on the house phone. Hello? 
Hello. Oh, Miss Landis? Yes, this is Miss Landis. Who is this? This is Mr. Hanson, the super. Uh, is everything all right up there, Miss Landis? Everything all right? Why, yes. Yes, of course. Okay, Miss Landis, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's that. No soap in 9B. 9A is in the country anyway. And if I got the window straight like you said, it ought to be 9B. The single ladies? Yeah, only it couldn't be them. They're real old maids. They've been living in the house for years. Real old-fashioned type, you know? Say, if they knew you thought there was a man in their apartment, <laughs> the two of them would just jump out of their skins. Whoa-ho! I don't know what to say. You sure it must be that apartment? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the place, all right. You probably just made a little mistake. You know how your eyes can play tricks on you? After all, it's a pretty wide street. I don't think I made any mistake. Hanson speaking. Hello, Mr. Hanson. This is Mr. Ames. Again? It's not there. But, Mr. Hanson... I checked up on the two apartments this morning. 9A is back from the country. Everybody's okay. And 9B is out walking the dog. No dead bodies in the whole place. I can see it. It's still there. Okay. Just where? Will you tell me where? In the same window. The one you said was 9B. Have you gone inside 9B? No, no, I didn't. But I asked them if anybody was sick or dead, and they said no. You asked them? Why didn't you just search their apartment? What do you mean? Break in when they're out? No. Search it while they're there. Ring the bell, walk in, and do it. Yeah? Not without a search warrant from the police. These apartments don't belong to me. I just take care of the building for the company. Then let's call the police. No, no, not me, mister. I didn't see no dead body up there. Then I will. After all, somebody's got to do something. I still maintain, officer, that these two sisters are as refined ladies as you can find anywhere. High class, nice church-going ladies. They used to teach school up here at PS 33. Yeah, that don't mean a thing. As it happens, there's a play on Broadway right now in which two nice old ladies commit murder after murder. They got a dog in there. Now, will you tell me one dog that would stay for almost a week in a flat with a dead person? I'm not telling you anything. All I know is this gentleman, Mr. Ames here, he reported a stiff over here. And if he says there is one, there is, until it's proved different. Right, Mr. Ames? Well, I keep seeing the thing day in and day out. I'm not working at the moment, and being home so much... None of the other neighbors have complained. Dead bodies ain't exactly. Right this way, please. I hope they're home. If they ain't home, you got a pass key, haven't you? Oh, yeah, but we're not supposed to use it unless for an emergency. This is an emergency. And uh, the, the dog bite? Sometimes. Get down, Buster. Get down now. Yes? Who is it? We're awful sorry, Ms. Landis, but there's been some kind of mix-up. These two gentlemen want to look over your apartment. But why? It's not for rent. Oh, I know. It's just that they, uh, they want to search around and, uh, check. Come on, come on. Cut out the palaver. Hey, look, lady. A dead body's been reported sitting in one of your windows. What? Yeah, yeah, this guy here. He lives across the street. He's been seeing it for over a week. Oh. Now, come on. Open up. A dead body? But that's impossible. My sister and I live here all alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about it. Excuse me a minute. I'll call my sister. Vivian? Vivian? Oh, come on. It's the police. Hey, lady, come on. I'm not standing out here all day. Come on, give me the passkey. It won't do no good. They got a chain on the door from the inside. <sighs> Open up in the name of the law. How do you do? I am Vivian Landis. May I ask you what all this is about? 
Certainly, lady. I got a search warrant made out by this gentleman here who said to search your place. He said you got a dead body in there. A dead body? <laughs> Why, that's perfectly ridiculous. It is, but it's been reported. Now kindly take the door off the chain and let us through. Of course. First, may I ask how did this peeping Tom see into our apartment? Well, I thought, Mr. Hansen, we... We're quite private. Well, you see, he lives across the street on the same level. Well, then we should have to keep our shades down in the future. Although one would think a grown man would have something better to do. Do come right in, gentlemen. Make yourselves right at home. Thanks. Is he coming in too, Mr. Busybody? No, he doesn't have to if you don't want him. Well, I most definitely don't. Okay, Mr. Ames, you better stay outside. Uh, officer, I was... Oh, he does want to poke around in our private rooms. Is that it? Then he better have some ulterior motive in worming his way in. Maybe he's coming to get the lay of the land so he can break in some day to rob us. Okay, okay, he's not coming in. Now, let's take a look at your window. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Okay. Hey, Mr. Ames, what's the big idea? You didn't find it? No. That's very strange. Yeah, the only thing stranger about it is your eyesight. You ought to get your glasses changed. There wasn't anything in 9B? No. I don't understand it. How could I have seen it so distinctly and it's not there? Perhaps it isn't in the window now. Perhaps they hid it while we were waiting outside the door. Hid it? Now where do you hide a body in a four-room flat? I looked in all the clothes closets, under the sofas, under the chairs. Maybe they got it out of the back into the service elevator? Single-handed? With all the garbage cans and the laundry going up and down. Perhaps they had accomplices. Oh, you probably think, oh, it's so terrible to keep seeing it and seeing it and feeling it slowly decaying there in secret. Why, the thing would be there for weeks. It's so high above the streets. Perhaps, perhaps it'll never be found. Perhaps it's already being destroyed. Well, then if it's gone, what do you got to worry about? You don't have to sit and look at it no more. But I, I hope it is. I tell you, it's really getting me down. I haven't slept for nights keeping vigil. I'm in a nervous state. I haven't been this nervous in years. I can see that. Look, why don't you try forgetting about it for a while? Try not to look over into that window or, uh, go away for a change. You've done what you could, Mr. Ames. If there really is a stiff over there, then it's my business, ain't it? You mean, you think I'm, I may be? I'm not saying nothing, Mr. Ames, but if I was you... I'd try catching up on a night's sleep. And now the conclusion of That Thing in the Window, starring Pete Lutz as Martin Ames. Hello? Miss Landis, I... I'm sorry to disturb you this time of night, but I really... I'm desperate. I... I haven't anywhere else to turn. What? Who is this? This is Mr. Ames. Martin Ames. Your neighbor? The one across the street. I was in your apartment yesterday morning with the police. Or, rather, I was almost inside your apartment. Your sister wouldn't let me in. Now, please don't think of me as a pest, Miss Landis. I don't mean to annoy you. It was only because I was... I was so desperate that I initiated that search. It's quite all right. Goodbye. No, please don't hang up because it's worse now than it ever was. Miss Landis, I've been sitting here opposite of your apartment, staring into your window, and I, I'm only asking you to help me, Miss Landis. Help me just a little. Help you? It's still there, Miss Landis. What is still there? The dead body in your window. Oh, my. There isn't. How dare you? When the police arrive... I know. I know. I know it doesn't have anything to do with you. 
But would you do me just one favor, Miss Landis? Would you go into your living room and just check once more? Oh! Uh, I won't! I'll do nothing of the kind! You're out of your mind! Perhaps I am, Miss Landis. That's what I'm trying to find out. Then perhaps your sister Vivian would help me? <gasps> She's not at home! Oh, Lord. And anyway, I don't see how you can see in. I pulled the shades down in there yesterday morning. I know. They're all down still. Then how can you see? I can't. At least not the actual body. It's just a silhouette. I'm not belying you or your sister, Miss Landis. It's just if there's someone dead in there, it's not you who are doing it. But think of me. What? If you could just be here and look over there and see the shadow of those quiet fingers, that shoulder, that head. Oh, please, stop it. Stop it. It's not here. It isn't. Just tell me one thing, Miss Landis. There is a chair by that window, though, isn't there? Yes. <laughs> there's a chair. A high-backed wing chair? Uh -huh. And have you anything on it? Anything piled up? I mean, like curtains, cushions, a dressmaker's dummy, or... Of course not! Or do you have a plant in the window in front of it? Some kind of an odd table? Anything? Anything that would cast a shadow like a man's head slumped forward or an arm hanging... Oh. No. There's nothing. Nothing but the chair. Then would you do me just one more favor, Miss Landis? Please? Please. As an experiment, would you just go into the living room and move that chair from the window, please? I... If I do it, would you stop pestering us? Yes. Would you leave us alone? Forever? Yes. Yes, if it works. If it works? What do you mean? I can't tell you, Miss Landis, until you move the chair. Do you mean... Oh... All right. All right. Hello? Yes? I moved it away from the window. It's at the other end of the room. And... It's empty. Oh, I see. Well, thanks very much, Miss Landis. I know what I have to do now. You mean... Yes, Miss Landis. It's still there. <laughs> Miss Landis... Where is it? I want to see it at once. Oh, yes, miss. Come in. I hope you'll excuse my appearance. I I just passed another sleepless night. So has my sister, and so have I. What do you mean by this business, Mr. Ames? You have frightened my sister half to death. I... Seeing things that aren't there, when you know they are not. I know they're not. Oh, I wish they weren't. I wish to heaven I never looked out that window. I wish those walls were solid stone. And your walls. Oh. You are a sick man, Mr. Ames. Oh, am I? I wish I were. But I'm perfectly sane and well. I went to the psychiatrist yesterday, and guess what he told me? That there's nothing wrong with me. Nothing. I can't believe that. I suppose it's a form of madness to persist and persist in this hideous image. But not me, Miss Landis. No. I've finally come to an entirely different conclusion. And what is that? The supernatural. The supernatural? A ghost? Oh, what nonsense, Mr. Ames. Yes, I suppose it is nonsense to you. Yes. You've been a school teacher. You believe in logic, common sense, the things that give up the pretense of solidarity in this frail life of ours. But I have eyes. I've always had a feeling for the hidden beyond, the intangible, the shadowy. We are children, Miss Landis, children playing along the edge of the ocean. We laugh and toy with the waves and mock fright. But sometimes, sometimes one of us slips down into the darkness. Sometimes the depths rise and we glimpse the yearning things of the eternal. You put things rather oddly, Mr. Ames. Just exactly... 
Simply this. I checked on that building with the real estate agents after I left my psychiatrist. There was a murder. In our apartment. Oh, the report doesn't say. You know how they try to hush those things up. It was a man, a young man, a lover of one of the tenants, a Miss Sweetser. Sweetser? That's the name of the people who lived there before us. Oh. They were an elderly couple, Mr. and Mrs. Sweetser. I never saw any Miss Sweetser. She died. She was the daughter. She killed herself afterwards by jumping out of one of the windows. Oh, how perfectly awful. A rather ghastly coincidence, isn't it? Was it out our window? No. She must have been a very neurotic person, though, this Miss Sweetser. Half crazed, almost, with love and jealousy. I checked over tales of an old newspaper. She cut his throat, nearly decapitated him. <gasps> it said that when they lifted his body out of the chair later, his head almost rolled. If there could possibly be something, why haven't we seen it, too? Why should you? Haven't you seen it, Miss Landis? No. Are you sure? Never? Perhaps in the middle of the night? Getting up and passing that room? Seeing that chair outlined against the window? Just, just in passing, perhaps? You've never had a glimpse? No, I'm, I... I really must be going. No, no, no. Please stay and look at it. I want you to see it out of my window. No. My, uh, uh my sister Elaine. She's, uh, very nervous. Uh, I can't leave her so long alone. Then how will I know? How? Miss Landis, I thought you came here. Especially. It'll only take a minute, really. It'll only take a minute. It's right in here in the bedroom. I just got to let up the Venetian blinds. Oh, Miss Landis, don't go. Miss Landis. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, Sergeant. This is Ames, Martin Ames. I just called to let you know I think you're right about that good night's sleep. Yes. I'm going away tomorrow for a long rest, shutting up my apartment. I... I'm all tied up in knots. I don't know what to think. Oh, they did. Yes, I saw the moving van in front of the house, but I... I didn't know it was those two sisters. Couldn't take it, huh? Well, I can't take it much longer myself. Martin, bravo! Bravo, old boy! <laughs> shh! Shh! Not so loud! <laughs> Why all the mystery? The superintendent, uh, doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd think he wouldn't like you, grabbing this beautiful apartment right from under his nose. He probably had a promise to a friend. But you've got it now, Ronald, just as I said. So I have, old boy, so I have. And it's beautiful. You know I'm crazy about it. Marty, you've outdone yourself. You've been more than generous. Think nothing of it, Ronald. I was glad to do it for such a distinguished colleague. Well, it certainly was nice of you. And I wish I could do something in return. I really do. Perhaps that play I'm doing next week. You know, there's a part in it. A rather small part, but very necessary. Well, thanks just the same, but I'm doing pretty well just now, Ronald. I don't know how you found it, Martin. I mean, in this housing shortage, you know, even the superintendent didn't notice the rent. When your call came to my manager, I left rehearsal. I wouldn't trust it to anyone but myself. <laughs> I left the whole cast just standing there when I came over. And when I asked this gloomy character, Hanson, he just said nothing about it. I insisted, of course. I told him who I was, and finally he pulled. Sure enough, these two sisters who lived here just decided to move out. I hope he didn't mention my name. You know, if Hanson knew that I tipped you off, he... Oh, no, no. You asked me not to. Anyway, I think my own name was enough. Seriously, Marty, how did you know? Were they friends of yours? Oh, no. It's all a long story. Come, let's sit down, shall we? In the living room. No, you take the chair. Guess they must have left that when they moved out. Oh, thank you. Well, to be frank, Ronald, I got this apartment by a ruse. A ruse? What kind of ruse? Oh, a pretty nasty one, actually. I frightened the last tenants away. 
I told them I saw a dead man sitting here in this window. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not really. How clever of you. Of course, there was one. You see, I live across the street, directly across in that apartment there with the French curtains. One night, just sitting there late, I got an amusing thought. There was a kind of shadow in this chair, the one you're sitting in. It reminded me a little bit of a corpse, and it came to me that it might be fun to create a great pawn, a character, a corpse that wasn't there. Oh, I don't follow you. Some actors need a play, Ronald, to create a character. Others, the great ones, work out their own dramas. I proceeded to invent a part for myself. I was the eyewitness, the innocent bystander across the street who saw a corpse in here. And I kept seeing it and kept seeing it. And finally, by the power of suggestion, it became real enough to frighten them away. <laughs> Very clever. Wasn't it rather drastic? I always hoped we'd be neighbors, Ronald. As a matter of fact, the whole idea for this thing came to me that day in October when you turned me down for that part outside of Sardi's. Don't you remember? You said you were looking for a place then. Oh, yes. It was then I thought how nice it would be to see you, right across the street, sitting in this window. I simply had to bring it about. Well, I, uh... Oh, no. No, 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 Ronald. Don't get up yet. I'm not through. <laughs> no, really, old boy. I, I think the gang doesn't even know that I'm here. They just... They'll wait. People always wait for you, don't they, Ronald? I could call them free, of course. But the phone's been disconnected. Well, I'm afraid that I'm, uh... Which way is the door, old boy? <laughs> now, really, Marty, it's been very kind of you to... Uh... Don't you like the apartment, Ronald? Aren't you going to take it, after all my work? Uh, yes, I like it very much. The door's locked. Yes, Ronald. I'm afraid you'll have to find your way out alone. Marty, I don't... What are you... There. That'll keep you quiet. <laughs> Silence always became you better than all that ranting and glibness and charm, Ronald. <laughs> and now I've got the part for you. The part to end all parts. Entirely in a chair. There's not much action. Not a line for you. Just sit, Ronald. <sighs> Just sit in this chair by the window. Here. It'll be the greatest performance of your career. You liked to hog all the fattest roles for yourself, didn't you? Well, this is a part that's been talked about up and down this street for weeks. You'll play the part of a ghost, a corpse that never was, a hallucination in my brain. And who will be your audience? I will. I, the insignificant outmoded ham, who wasn't fit to appear in your precious plays, but good enough to put you here, Ronald. Who's the better actor now, Ronald? Goodbye, Ronald. See you across the street. Lucille Fletcher's Dark Journey and That Thing in the Window were directed and produced by Rachel Pulliam for Showcase Classics and the Sonic Society Summer Stock Playhouse. Dark Journey starred Rhiannon McAfee as Alice and Christy Glick as Anne, with Heath Martin as the conductor. That Thing in the Window starred Pete Lutz as Martin Ames, Elise Krawick as Mary, Glenn Haskell as Mr. Hansen, Margaret Ashley as Miss Landis, Jerry Kokich as Sergeant, Holly Stevenson as Vivian Landis, and John Bell as Ronald. All sounds were provided by freesound.org, with original incidental music by Ross Bernhardt. The suspense theme was composed by Bernard Herman and reimagined and performed by David Krauss. This is Bruce Busby, your host for Showcase Classics. <laughs>